Hello everyone! It is July the 1st, which means it is the first day of the Book Junkie Trials readathon. I am so excited. I don't normally do readathons, especially when they're month long, because I'm just not very good at them. But here we are. We're doing it. If you want to see my TBR for the readathon, I will leave a link to that video down below. You should probably go and watch that first. But it's day one, which means I need to start reading. But I haven't done so yet because I filmed my wrap up and that's all I've done today so far. <laughs> I just realised I haven't even got the books that I'm reading. I should probably do that. But now that I've finished filming, I am going to take a break and have some lunch and also do a little bit of reading before I edit the video because my first book is Circe by Madeline Miller. This is a reread for me. Circe is a sorceress from the Odyssey. However, she's not really in the Odyssey that much because, you know, sexism is always a thing. But Madeline Miller has given her a story and that is this book, this very very shiny book which I'm gonna put down because it's messing with my lighting. <laughs> but like I said this is a reread for me and I absolutely loved it, it's one of my favourite books so I'm super excited to reread it. I am going to be annotating it as well because it goes towards some of my summer project. This book will complete my first challenge which is to go to Dwarf Mount which is a book with a hint of romance. Cersei also happens to be the July book of the month for Mythtake. So this book is going to start me off pretty well. It's pretty much doing everything I need it to. <laughs> but yes, like I said, I will be annotating Cersei and I'm going to be listening to the audiobook as well just to help speed me up because annotating really slows me down so I'm kind of like counteracting it with the audiobook. I do read and listen at the same time as I always do. I should probably also mention as well that I will be weekly vlogging all throughout July. There's going to be two videos a week from me if I can manage it. So enjoy that. This is the first one. It's starting off with the babble. It's going well. <laughs> Okay, excuse the <laughs> very white background, but I was about to start reading and I went downstairs to get my cup of tea and the mailman came and very unexpectedly I had some mail. <laughs> I still can't believe this. Basically, my very lovely friend Brit over at Basically Brit sent me some mail and I wasn't expecting it and I cried. <laughs> So I thought I would show you because she sent me some things from her Etsy shop and I just love all her designs so I thought I would share. So she did send me a card but I'm not going to show you what's inside because that's for me. <laughs> but she also sent me three of her bookmarks. So we have this one which is Life's Full of Sunshine covered in some flowers. We have a galaxy themed one which says books let me escape the real world. And also this one, which I think is my favourite, which says it's a good day to have a good day and I just love the floral details on it. There we go. Look at that. The tiny little bee. It's just so pretty. But then she also sent me a packet of the bookish stickers that she just introduced and I'll do like a cutaway shot of all of these. But basically like these, you could use them in your bullet journal or a reading journal or just anything really. But they're really cute and I've actually gotten really lazy with my journaling lately. But I think I'm going to try and put more effort in back into my bullet journal in August. So these stickers will come in handy then. I don't want to stick them in my July spreads because my July spreads are rubbish and the stickers deserve better. But yeah, I will leave a link to Brit's channel and her Etsy shop down in the description box. But I just thought I'd mention them in case you wanted to go and check them out. And thank you, Brit, for the mail, because I wasn't expecting it. And I've messaged you anyway, so you already know my reaction, but it's just too nice to me. <laughs> but yes, I am actually going to read now because I keep putting it off and I don't know why. I think I'm almost a bit too daunted to start the readathon now. But my oh my god, I got mascara all over my face from when I sobbed. <laughs> but yeah. People on the Discord chat are talking about how much they've read already and I don't want to let my team down so I'm going to read now. I've got my cup of tea in that owl mug over there. Let's do it. <laughs>
guys, it's now Tuesday the 2nd of July, which means it's the second day of the readathon. And yeah, I haven't done much reading today because I have just met up with a friend, Cheryl, and we had a lovely catch up. But between last night and this morning, I've managed to get to page 150 of Cersei. And one thing that I just want to say is that I am absolutely adoring the audiobook. Like, I have already been preaching about the audiobook literally everywhere. I've basically coerced Brit into reading it and I also just keep like tweeting about it, telling people in the Discord to read it. I just, I want people to listen to the audiobook because the narrator, I think she's called Perdita Weeks, she just manages to sound like a goddess and it baffles me. Like she just has the exact right tone of immortality. Like she has the patience but also the almost boredom at times and the authority and the power in her voice but she just sounds so calm and serene the entire time and you can just you just get the feeling that she's lived a very long time and knows how to tell a story and I just it baffles me that I can generally believe that this woman is a goddess like what I absolutely love it and I would highly recommend it to anybody who thinks that they might not get along with Cersei or they just want to speed up their reading process because it is quite a slow moving book. I forgot how much I love it but I think something about like the whole aesthetic of Cersei's story in this book just wins me over because she's literally a goddess whose power comes from nature and honestly the descriptions of her turning up on her island just... <laughs> They get me guys, they get me. <laughs> but yeah, I just thought I would show you through some of my annotations as well because I've really gotten going on that now. So I've basically been like annotating every single page because I just love it so much. I want to annotate everything. So I thought I'd show you some of that now. I feel like my dress matches Cersei so well today. As I said, I've been annotating it quite a lot. Not that you can tell on this clip. There we go. <laughs> But yes, in the beginning I've just drawn this like tiny sun because Cersei's father is Helios, who is a sun god. And I've also just been like making a note of certain characters who, I don't know, like how they're related to Cersei I guess. So we have like her siblings and her mother and father and also just like random uncles and things. Then we just have some like general annotations about things that might be interesting, whether they're from a feminist point of view or whatever. I've also been circling names the first time they come up just to make a note of them I guess. I've been kind of marking recognisable stories so every time a character comes up in this from I don't know another mythology book or just a reference to someone else's mythology I've been making a note of it so that I can see where the stories kind of intertwine. Let me find my favourite part. This is the chapter where Cersei arrives at her island and <laughs> there's a lot of annotations for this part because I just absolutely adore how the forest is described and how she's like very much seen to have an affinity with nature and how she's like really tied up with it. So I basically just annotated this to death. I've also started colouring in the corners of pages for quotes that I really like because I don't like having sticky tabs sticking out of my book, it really annoys me. So I drew a little part next to it but I wanted another way to mark it so I can see like as I'm flicking through any pages with this pink corner has a favourite quote on it. And this one just says, For a hundred generations I had walked the world drowsy and dull, idle and at my ease. I left no prints, I did no deeds. Even those who had loved me a little did not care to stay. Then I learned that I could bend the world to my will as a bow is bent for an arrow. I would have done that toil a thousand times to keep such a power in my hands. And then I also have this one a couple of pages later because this is one of my favourite descriptions of Cersei. So it says, I scarcely knew myself. My gaze seemed brighter, my face sharper, and there behind me paced my wild lion familiar. I could imagine what my cousins would say if they saw me. My feet dirty from working in the garden, my skirts knotted up around my knees, singing at the height of my frail voice. I just really love that image of Cersei. I... I mean, I kind of relate to it. I mean, I wish I had a wild lion familiar, but I don't know. It's just one of the things I kind of want to paint if I was any good at painting people, but yeah, I just really like this. 
So that's kind of how my annotation has been going but so far, as I said, I'm around the 150 page mark, which is about halfway through. But yeah, I'm definitely going to be reading more today, so hopefully I'll be able to get quite a lot done because I'm speeding through it quite quickly and I don't really have any other plans for today, so this is my plan. <laughs> Hi guys, it is now Wednesday morning and I am going to be meeting Charlotte in a couple of hours. We're going to do some planning for Myth Take, which is very much needed because we have many ideas and not many plans. <laughs> so we're going to be doing that and I think we're just going to like spend many hours in the Waterstones Cafe, which is very nice and it's nice and sunny today so it'll be nice to get out of the house. But I'm not meeting her for a couple of hours yet so... I'm going to read some more Cersei this morning. I'm around the 200 page mark and I kind of want to try and finish it today. I feel like it's possible but it depends how long me and Charlotte spend together today. But I think if I read some this morning and then this evening I focus on reading the rest of it, I think I'll be able to do it guys. Do I have any updates on Cersei since reading it? I have read another 100 pages so I feel like I should. But I think because I have read it before and I already know it's a favourite, I don't quite know what else to say. At this point Cersei has turned more into the like bad guy type situation that people perceive her as. But I don't perceive her as a bad guy. She does do some horrible things but like I love her still. <laughs> I'm just baffled because Madeline Miller has managed to create a character who actually feels immortal but like authentically if that's even possible because we don't know what it feels like to be immortal. She kind of just manages to make time seem infinite and it baffles me <laughs> and I just feel like she's captured the voice of like a Greek goddess perfectly because there is quite a lot of like not relationships or romance but she does actually sleep with quite a few people in this book and I just feel like that's such a, it's such a typical thing of Greek mythology but like it's all reasoned out within this book and it makes more sense because like I said time frame is literally eternity so like everything's reasoned out and just I don't know how to explain it but I will try and give more coherent thoughts when I finish the book I think because at the minute I'm just like <laughs> I love it so much <laughs> but yeah I'm gonna go and read more now and we'll hopefully update you when I finish the book tonight <laughs> So it's about 11.15pm and I just finished Cersei. In fact, I finished Cersei bang on 11 o'clock but I didn't do anything for the past 15 minutes because I'm just like, oh. this book guys, I feel like this book is just my soul. Like, if you see any anything of me online really then you probably know that I'm always like I just adore nature and I'm always trying to make life seem more magical because why not and I very much want the whole like woodland nymph slash witch slash any kind of mythical being kind of aesthetic <laughs> and it's like basically that aesthetic that I'm always going for is this book I want to absorb so much of Cersei's traits and even like the negative side of her that's shown in this 
was still authentic and like I just can't help but admire her in a way and I just <sighs> it has such a bittersweet ending as well at least I think so but I think that's just because I adore Cersei so much. <laughs> I didn't love one of the things about the ending because all the way through she kind of like has different partners because she lives a very long life and wants companions and like if they come along why not? And I kind of appreciated seeing the fact that not all of them were like a one in a lifetime kind of romance. Some of them were literally just like, might as well. But like the kind of ending relationship, I don't begrudge it, but I'm also like, really? I, I think I would have just preferred to have seen her like go off and do her own thing, which she did, but like, I just feel like not every kind of story of companionship needs to be a romantic kind of companionship if you know what I mean like I'd prefer her to just have a friend or something like but anyway that's it's always bound to happen that way and I suppose it is a Greek myth retelling when like everything's about romance or just who's sleeping with who basically but yeah I rated it five stars of course I did but this also means that I've completed my first like stop on the book junkie trials which is very exciting i already feel like i'm behind because everybody there's a discord chat for the readathon and everybody is really quick at reading and there's people on the scribe team who are on like their third book already it's the third day and i'm like <laughs> i have read this book quicker than i normally would a lot quicker than i normally would i read it in three days where a book would usually take me a week because I'm slow. And yet I still feel behind because people get competitive and are a lot quicker at reading than I am. <laughs> so I'm quite glad to be able to say I've at least read one book now. And tomorrow I'm going to be moving on to The Harm Tree by... Oh my god, what's her name? Rose Edwards. <laughs> but I'm going to talk about that more tomorrow because it's very late now. So, yeah. <laughs> Thursday evening and all I've really done today is subtitle a video and I spent a very long time taking lots of bookish photos and I started my second book for the Book Junkie Trials which is The Harm Tree by Rose Edwards. This is an arc that I got from Preston when I went to the Northern Young Adult Literature Festival and all I really knew going into this is that it follows an old war which starts up again and it follows two friends who end up on the opposite sides of this war. So I'm intrigued to see, see where this goes. It has kind of Norse influences in the names and it kind of does feel a bit more Nordic than your usual fantasy would. I'm only 50 pages in so far so it's very much like the world building and the character building that's going on at the minute but I am intrigued. I'm quite eager to keep reading so that's always a good sign when you're only 50 pages in. There's like a character guide in the front which I have had to refer to quite often already not because the characters are hard to follow but because the war that is mentioned is very much about a divide in religions so there's two different religions and the gods are called I think there's the white god and the wise one and I just haven't quite wrapped my head around like which places worship which gods and things like that and who believes in what and you know that kind of thing so I have had to refer to it quite often just to kind of try and solidify what they're actually arguing about or like just to see which belief 
is seen as treason or heresy and things like that so when it comes to things like that in books I usually just keep reading and at some point it'll all make sense so hopefully that will happen but for now I'm going to start editing this vlog and then watch some booktube and hopefully read some more of this. I think over the weekend I might just do a few shots here and there because I'm going to start reading the Furies as well as the Harm Tree and like do one of the side challenges that isn't part of my quest journey just because I really want to read the Furies by Katie Lowe so I'm going to be doing that but I am going to be away from home from tomorrow evening until Sunday evening so I don't know how many like spoken updates you're going to get from here. I will of course update you on Sunday on what I read over the weekend and yeah, I'll be back then. <laughs> okay, please ignore the state of this because I've just been in the bath, but I forgot to give you like an update on things that are coming up soon and I really want to because I completely didn't get the chance to update you last time. I'm not making sense. Basically, on Saturday the 13th, <laughs> Charlotte and I are going to be hosting another Twitter chat for Myth Take and this time the theme is Greek mythology because that is our theme for July. And I just wanted to tell you because now that I'm doing weekly vlogs, I can actually tell you things like that in advance and not after we've done it. <laughs> so please, if you are around on Saturday evening, then come and join us. It's going to be, I think, 8pm UK time and yeah I'll leave a link to the announcement tweet down in the description box so that you can read the actual details because I wasn't prepared to do this announcement. I'm really excited to do it you don't have to be like a professional at Greek mythology or like know everything to join in you can just join us talk about what you do know and maybe learn some things I don't know it's just we like talking about books all right and we want people to join us as we do that so if you are around on Saturday evening, or just Saturday, depending on your time zone, then come and join us. It'll only be about an hour or something. We'd really appreciate it because we don't want to be just talking to ourselves. So yeah, keep an eye out for that. And also keep an eye out for my video that's coming on Friday because we have another announcement coming, which is even more exciting. Some of you are pretty good at figuring out the hints that we leave, so yeah. Keep an eye out for that on Friday. <laughs> but yes, now me and my very shiny face will actually leave you to the whole weekend montage. <laughs> Enjoy. I'm gonna end this vlog with like such a long update I feel like because I just have so many books to talk about. So I'm going to try and keep this relatively short but I think by now we all know that that's not going to happen. So while I was at my boyfriend's house this weekend on Friday evening we went to watch the new Spider-Man film and then on Saturday yesterday we didn't really do much until the evening so I took part in the basically readathon which was hosted by basically Brit. I didn't think that I would be able to take part that much because I tweeted something saying like oh I'm going to be very low-key taking part 
I read pretty much an entire book, <laughs> which I'm going to talk about in a second. And then today, after leaving Richard, I met up with Jasmine from Jasmine's Reads. We just went for coffee together and browsing around Waterstones. We had a lovely time. It was so lovely to actually meet her because we've been meaning to her for quite a while now. And yeah, it was, it was good. <laughs> so that's kind of what I've been doing activity-wise. So yes, rewinding to the 24-hour readathon yesterday. Like I said, I managed to read pretty much an entire book and that book was The Furies by Katie Lowe. I picked this up because of Becca over at Becca in the Book. She recently read this and was raving about it and she like particularly brought this to my attention because it might have been a mythotake book, which I don't think it is because it's not a fantasy retelling. So I wouldn't class this as a mythotake book, but it is heavily inspired by mythology and like the classics that way. It's kind of, it reminded me a lot of The Secret History because it's very much the kind of dark academia slash pretentious kind of schooling <laughs> and and if you know me at all then you'll know that I particularly love that so I did really enjoy this one. I haven't really formed proper thoughts on it because I was just reading it so quickly and like I said I wasn't at home so I feel like I haven't formed proper thoughts but I rated this four stars. I'm trying to pinpoint why I didn't rate it higher so I think this was one that you might have to wait for my wrap up for to like get more coherent thoughts. But I did really enjoy it and I'd recommend it. It, it was a good one. <laughs> I'm really, really surprised I managed to read it so quickly because I don't usually do that. So I was particularly happy about that. But that also meant that I didn't have a book for my train ride home because I didn't expect to finish that book at all. So I went to Waterstones today while I was with Jasmine and picked up a couple of books. But the one that I bought for my train ride home was Other Words for Smoke by Sarah Maria Griffin. I don't really know much about this one besides it being a fantasy and I think witchy. And I only read 70 pages on my way home. Now this won't go towards any of my quest challenges for the readathon, but I'm going to use this as like an extra one. The same with the Furies. I think the Furies is going to be Oak Grove, so I've done a massive detour and gone and visited Oak Grove after completing my first challenge with Cersei and now I'm currently reading The Harm Tree for my second challenge and also reading this one for an extra few points. <laughs> I think I might do this one for Glimmer because look at this. It's beautiful. But so far, like I said, I've only read 70 pages but I'm really, really intrigued. Like she's written in a very particular kind of way that makes it seem kind of mysterious and just strange. <laughs> I could not tell you what's going to go on in this book but I'm very intrigued to find out and I'm kind of glad that I picked this up because I've been um and ahhing about it for quite a while. I feel like it's one of the books that I very much anticipated being a bit like meh about. I thought it might be a bit average but the writing style and just what's happened so far has really pulled me in actually so Maybe this is going to surprise me. <laughs> so yeah, this vlog has had all the books in it. How many books have I talked about? Like four, five? I don't even know anymore. So I'm going to leave this vlog here. Next week, I don't even know what I'm doing. I have a lot of videos to make, so probably that. I know I need to blog some more and I'll be meeting up with a couple of people, but I think at the weekend will be when I do more interesting things because Next weekend I will be staying with Charlotte and we're going to a book festival and I'm gonna go and see Samantha Shannon again <laughs> because I'm obsessed. I'm quite excited for next week's vlog because I'm gonna be doing something interesting. <laughs> but yes, as for now, I'm going to go and have some food, probably read some more, but I will update you about that in next week's vlog. So. I hope you've enjoyed this vlog, I hope you're having a lovely day and I shall see you next time with a new video. Bye!